Hey everyone, welcome back to Six Sister Stuff. Today we're making three no-bake dump and go desserts. So my name is Kristen. My name's Elise. So last month we made three dump and go no-bake desserts and you guys absolutely love them. So we thought that we'd make some more for you. <laughs> So these are some of our favorite no-bake desserts, starting with our mom's no-bake cookies. We grew up eating these. We also call them Gorilla Poops. I'm sure you guys have a name. Tell us what you guys would call <laughs> your no-bake cookies because there's a whole... A gorilla whole... Poops for yeah. us. <laughs> we wanna know. And then we've got S'mores Bark, really simple, just a couple ingredients. Yeah, yeah. And then our last recipe is chocolate fondue in your Instant Pot, so really easy. I love using your Instant Pot for that, it's perfect. Exactly. All right, let's get started. All right, so the first recipe we're making is the s'mores bark. Now, I mm. love this recipe because it's like s'mores. It literally yeah. is all the ingredients for s'mores. You're not gonna smell like a campfire, but you still exactly. gotta eat s'mores. Exactly, so it's super simple. So first we're gonna take just a bag of chocolate chips. You can use any brand. We like to use Hershey's brand, just it's one of my favorites. Yeah. I feel like it melts well too. Yeah, and if you like dark chocolate, you can make this with dark, but I like milk chocolate. All right, so we're gonna stick this in the microwave and go about every 30 seconds, we're going to stir until it's completely melted. Okay, so everything's all melted, ready to go. Now we put some parchment paper down. I've also done wax paper. You can do foil paper, maybe spray it, but parchment or wax, I feel, yeah. works the best. So we're just gonna take the chocolate chips and just dump them right on. Make sure I get all the chocolate. Now you can make this as thick or thin as you want. You can add more chocolate chips, um, but we're just doing the two cups today. All right, then the goal is to spread this th thin. I like it thin because it's more of a bark. Yeah. But you and can, it can make feed it more thicker. more people that way. If the exactly. Serve more anyway. Exactly. Or you don't feel as bad when you have 20 pieces. <laughs> No control. All right, what do you think? How do you think of this? That's good. Okay. So it almost fills up the whole sheet pan. Yes, and if you did more, if you did like three cups or three and a half cups, I think is what the recipe calls for, you would literally fill up the yeah. whole pan, but we're just doing a little today. Yeah. Okay, you can add the next stuff. Okay, so we're just topping it with graham crackers that have been broken up. So I took four graham crackers and just like, yeah. Cut, broke them all up, and then yeah, just, just... Just kind of coarsely, they don't need to be perfect. Exactly, because you think about it, it's gonna be bark, so you're gonna break it all apart, so it really won't matter how just pretty it looks sure right now. sticking <laughs> yes. in the chocolate, okay. Yes. All right, while you do that, I'll do some marshmallows, kind of just do it in your cracks. It smells like s'mores. It, it literally tastes just like s'mores. Obviously, you're, using all the you're not going to have to wash your hair. That's the worst part about fire. It your is. hair absorbs all the smell. It is. Okay, so now that we got most of it, I'm just going to go and just like pat everything down, just so it won't fall apart as you're breaking apart your bark. So to finish off the s'mores bark, we just need some marshmallow cream. Just use about half this container, and you're going to soften it in the microwave until it is runny enough that you can kind of drizzle it on top as a garnish. Now, just a word of warning, in the microwave it will kind of puff up, and as soon as it puffs up, that's when you want to pull it out, and you'll just start mixing it, and it will become like stretchy, like okay. the, the gooey marshmallow stuff. A little you thinner. Want. Exactly. Okay. So this was 20 seconds in the microwave. You can see it's a little puffy. We'll just kind of mix it until it's a little more liquefied. Yes, okay. yes, just keep mixing, and then it will be pretty gooey. Now, it's, it's a little hard to drizzle, but it'll come. So, I, yeah, I kind of just did that, and then it doesn't have to be pretty because it's bark. It doesn't matter, so. Nice, you're doing, you're doing great. You're doing much better Chocolates than I did. Chocolate's here. Oh, that's gonna be a marshmallow I want bite. that bite, I want that bite. <laughs> all right, and that's, that's, that's literally all there is to it. So we're gonna stick this in the freezer. It works better in the freezer because it hardens a lot faster, because mm -hmm. if it's kind of warm in your house, the chocolate will get a little soft, so. Okay. It, I would suggest keep it in your freezer before you're ready to serve it. All right, stick it in. Okay. okay. So we took our s'mores bark out of the freezer, broke it up into pieces. You can see they're not uniform. They don't have to be perfect. It looks so cute. It looks so cute. Do right. try it? Try it. Oh, that's good. 
good. Tastes like summer. Right? Just without the fire. Yeah. <laughs> All right, moving on to the next recipe. The second no-bake recipe we're making is our gorilla poops, or no-bake cookies, whatever you call them. This was a staple in our home growing up, still is with still our own is. families and I swear kids. like, maybe once a month. No, maybe more than that. Maybe every <laughs> other week. We are making grills. because they're so easy. And you probably have all these ingredients you need to make them right now, so exactly. do it. Okay, so you'll have a saucepan over medium high heat, and to that I'm just adding two tablespoons of butter. That may be a little closer to high heat right there. It's okay, we're gonna do brown <laughs> butter today. And two cups of sugar. And then we're adding a fourth cup of milk. And then two tablespoons of cocoa powder. And you just wanna mix this together until it starts boiling. Right. This is the tricky part with no-bake cookies. If you've had a dry no-bake cookie, it means it probably boiled for too long. For boiled, right? yeah, boiled for too long, or you did not add enough liquid. Okay. Um, okay, we're just gonna add a little bit of vanilla. We're gonna eyeball this. It's like a half a teaspoon or so. And then just a little bit of salt. What is it, like half a teaspoon of salt? Half a teaspoon of salt. Okay, I'm gonna eyeball that too, because that's how we work. So yeah. this usually takes a couple minutes just to kind of incorporate everything and yep, yep. get it to the right temperature to boil. Exactly. And you don't want like little tiny bubbles when you boil. You want a big, big rolling, rolling okay. boil. So you can see it's boiling now. It big smells rolling boil. So good. So as soon as it boils, do we let it go for a minute? Yeah, just, just for like a minute or so and then take pop it, it off. Take it off the heat. Yep. Okay. We've, this has been going for a little bit, so we'll take it off. And it'll still boil for a second, so just be careful, it's hot. Yeah, but while it is still burning hot, that's when you wanna add your peanut butter. So we're gonna add, what, three-fourths cup? Yes. Okay. And this is just easier to eyeball. We, you can, the good thing, this recipe is very forgiving, <laughs> yeah. so we eyeball a lot with this. <laughs> so three-fourths cup, we just use a creamy peanut butter. You could use crunchy. crunchy. We've done that yeah, before. Yeah, it just has so a little bit of nuts, but I, I prefer creamy. Yeah. You'll get texture from those. So exactly. Okay. All right, so while the peanut butter is mixing, we like to use the quick one minute oats because the oats are a little bit smaller and it makes your cookie just taste a little bit better. So once all the peanut butter is melted, we're just gonna add the two cups of oats. I like the texture from the quick oats too. Me too. Because sometimes if you use just the normal oat milk, it's just too big. Mm -hmm. Like. Yeah, I like the little, the little oats. So this starts setting up pretty quick after it's all mixed. Yeah, so you gotta, you kinda gotta mix quickly. And it's good to have your pan ready to go. We have a baking sheet, a cookie sheet that we've just put some foil on. You could use wax paper or parchment paper too. Yeah. But as soon as that oatmeal is coated. So growing up, our mom would always take a spoon and do it with her finger, but your finger is burning the whole time that you're making them, so. We figured out if you just use a cookie, cookie scoop, one, all your cookies will be the same, and two, there is no burning of fingers here. <laughs> it just makes it go by quick and easy. And they hold their shape pretty well, so yes. the size of your scoop is the size that your cookies will be. Yeah, and we use a giant one, because... Yeah, the bigger the... Go, do an ice cream scoop. <laughs> right I mean, and if, if you don't have a cookie scoop, you could easily just yeah. spoon it out, too, but... We like them all to be about the same size. And they'll set up pretty quickly at room temperature, but if you wanted to eat them sooner, they're good hot, they're good warm and gooey. Yeah. But you can stick them in your fridge for a couple minutes too. Exactly. I always loved rainy days because we'd come home and there'd be foil on the counter <laughs> and our mom had no baked cookies out and it was right. like, we wouldn't even wait for them to set up and you can like see the mark left on the foil when you take one, like who ate one? Right, I even remember like you walk into the garage and you know that mom <laughs> made these gorilla poops. <laughs> you could smell them from a mile away. All right. So we're just gonna let these set up for a little bit until they're cool and can hold their shape. Yeah, and then we're gonna eat them. Well, we tried to wait until they <laughs> cooled down, but I'm just going for it. Me they too. smell too good. This is kind of actually the temperature I like them. Me too. Mm. Mm. 
so good. Put even like a little vanilla ice cream. Oh yeah, too. sign me up. All right, all done with this recipe. Let's move on to the next one. So the last recipe that we're making is in the Instant Pot, and I, I'm so excited to show you this because my sister came up with this. <laughs> um, and so we're making Instant Pot fondue. So what we did first is we took about two cups of water and just put it in the bottom of the Instant Pot. Then you're gonna take a glass bowl or any bowl that will kind of fit that, that can get hot, and we'll just put it right right on top of it. So all you're gonna do next is just push the saute button. So we've kind of just made it like a, what do they call it? Those double Yeah, broiler. a double broiler, yeah, yeah. You can do that with your Instant That's Pot. That's cool. I know, okay. All right, so to start our Instant Pot chocolate fondue, we're going to use a 12 ounce bag of semi-sweet chocolate chips. You'll want the whole bag. Or if you have more, it's just like what, two cups. About two, two cups. cups semi-sweet. And then a cup of milk chocolate chips. Nice. So you want those? to combine. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have this on saute, chocolate chips are in, let's just slowly add our cream. So this is a cup of heavy cream. Just, yeah. I guess I can mix as we go. <laughs> mixing, mixing. <laughs> Didn't know how fast or slow I should be pouring it. It'll all mix. You're doing great. Okay. So while Kristen's mixing the heavy cream and the chocolate chips, I'm just gonna add a dash of salt and then about a teaspoon of vanilla extract. And again, we eyeball all things, can't especially go wrong vanilla. With vanilla. Exactly. Yeah. I feel like you can't mess that one up. And I know we'll probably we use the imitation vanilla. You can use real vanilla, and we know we probably should use real vanilla. We just don't. We're, we're just, we have kids. We're on a budget. Exactly. Let's be honest. <laughs> All right, so this will take about, I don't know, eight to 10 minutes for it to slowly start to melt and get warm. All mixed together, smells amazing. So now what you wanna do is you wanna push the cancel button because we don't want to burn it on the bottom. Um, or you can keep it warm if you're not all the way ready to serve, but if you're ready to serve, go ahead and push cancel and go ahead and dive right in. Yeah. All right, so you wanna show them what we got? Yeah, so up to you what you want to dip in your chocolate fondue. But our kids and us, we really love Nilla wafers, cinnamon bears, fruit, like strawberries, bananas. We've even done pineapple. You can do also like pretzels and graham crackers. And Rice Krispie treats, oh, brownie yeah. bites. Everything's dippable in chocolate, let's be honest. Exactly. All right, what are you, what are you gonna pick? What are you gonna do? Oh, I'm doing the banana. I'll probably do the cinnamon bear. I do love chocolate covered cinnamon bears. Me too. This is good for like a stay at home date night. Right? Kids will love it. It's still sweet enough from the milk chocolate mixed in with yeah. the semi-sweet. I like the semi-sweet in there too. Mm -hmm. And I mean, even after school snack, kids would love this. Oh yeah, you'd be the coolest mom on the block. Right. Now, if you love our dessert recipes, make sure you check out our other dessert recipes just right up there. And we'll see you guys next week. Bye.